Hey, I'm Vicky, and in this video, I'm going to be talking all about which is the best kids' tablet. If you're looking to buy a tablet for your child, then you probably already know that there is a lot of choice on the market. Some of those options are geared up specifically for kids, and others have options to make them kid friendly. This video is geared up at helping you make a decision between the big three options iPad, Amazon Fire Kids and Android. I've got some specific examples of makes and models, but the real aim of this video is to give you a real broad brush look at those different types of tablet to help you narrow down your search and make a decision. Which is the right tablet for your child is going to depend on a number of different circumstances such as their age, your budget and what exactly they want to do with the tablet. My kids are primary school age and have had tablets since the youngest was age three. So this video is really mainly geared up for parents of toddlers and and preschoolers and kids who are primary school age but I think people with slightly older children tweens and teens will probably get something out of this as well let's kick this off then by talking about the iPad if you know anything about iPads you'll know they're expensive however they are reliable they are fast and they are fantastic bits of tech with great cameras. The processor can handle big games such as Roblox. This is actually an iPad mini 4 from way back in 2015, so it's no longer supported by Apple software updates. However, it still works and it works brilliantly for the games that my kids love to play such as Roblox. There is a huge range of games available in the Apple store, both paid for and free, and you can set really detailed parental controls via the settings. You can set your child up with their own profile on your iPad if you want to share an iPad with them to get started and you can have individual profiles for different kids in your house and you can set different settings for those kids. Those settings include time limits on specific apps, time limits on using the tablet, restricting them from using certain things at all such as the internet and certain apps, for example social media apps. But let's be honest about the disadvantages here because it is an Apple device you're paying for the brand and so it is very very expensive. Generally speaking this is the most expensive out of all of our options. Some of the Android tablets obviously that overtake or come close to the price of an Apple iPad generally speaking your Apple is going to be the most expensive option. And the other big disadvantage with an iPad is that they're quite easy to break compared to some of the other options that we're going to talk about and obviously as they're easy to break they're expensive to replace. Of course with an iPad you can save a bit of money by buying the previous generation of iPad that's generally less expensive than the brand new most recently bought out version of the iPad. Okay guys let's move on to Android tablets now. Now the specific one that I have here is a Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite just like with my iPad, this is also a tablet that my kids have been using in our home. But like generally speaking, like with iPad, if you get a decent Android tablet, you're going to have a fast processor, you're going to have great screen quality. This one is absolutely fantastic for games. There's a wide selection of games in the Android store. Now obviously with Android tablets you have got a very 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 wide selection of different makes and models on the market. I'm talking specifically about Samsung here and the great thing about Samsung is that they have the Samsung Kids option. With Samsung Kids you basically set up the tablet so it is safe for your child and you have complete parental control over it. You can set limits, you can restrict certain activities so they can only play on the apps, use the apps, use the internet or not at all. Just everything in the way that you feel comfortable with them doing. Okay guys, so this is the basic setup with Samsung Kids. These are the apps that come immediately sort of available and it includes a really, really basic like browser with some just approved content. So this is not just access to the World Wide Web, there's just approved content here. And then if you want to get more apps, then you can do that via the parental controls. So you can add more than what's here. These are just like the really, really basic things that come preloaded, which are very much child appropriate, like nothing to worry about here, including access to the camera and the camera gallery for the pictures that they're taking while in the Samsung Kids profile. And then in order to exit it, your child is gonna need the pin. So you're the only one that can exit Samsung Kids via the pin um, to so that your child can't you know use your adult profile or change settings. Again same disadvantages with the iPad though also more expensive than other options that we're about to talk about on the market and quite easy to break particularly if you drop them down face first on the floor. I have to confess I've never broken a tablet however I have broken the streams, screens of several iPhones and it really doesn't take a lot when you drop them on the floor, not even from a particularly great height for the screen to shatter a little, even just like in the corner or across the whole thing. 
Let's move on now to the Amazon Kids range of tablets. So we have had an Amazon Kids 8 and an Amazon Kids 8 Pro. However, in the Amazon Kids range, you also have an Amazon Kids 7, which is their super basic, super budget option. If I'm being honest, if you can afford it, I would always go for the 8 or above. And then you've also got the 10 and the 10 Pro. I've talked about this before in previous reviews of the 8 and the 8 Pro. I'm going to link to those videos in the description below. But just very, very briefly, what's the difference between the non-Pro and the Pro? Basically, the Pro is geared up for kids age 6 and over. The non-Pro is geared up for younger kids, toddlers and the early years of school. As you can see, they look very different and the content that they can access on the Pro is much more varied. There's a lot more going on, including access to a store via that store they can make requests to you the parent to either purchase or to download for free brand new apps but ultimately you the parent have control over both so the Amazon tablets are technically their Android tablets however they come with the Amazon kids operating software when you purchase an Amazon Kids tablet, you get one year free subscription to Kids Plus. That is Amazon's kid-friendly content for their tablets. As part of that subscription, they get access to loads of free games, books, and videos. Plus, you can add certain apps to the tablet as well. For example, we've added Netflix and Disney Plus to our kids' tablets so that they can watch that content. Weirdly though, you can't add Amazon Prime to the Amazon Kids tablets. You can access it via an adult profile. Your adult profile will be set up on the tablet. You can access it via that, but you can't add it to your kids' profiles. Why Amazon has done this, I do not know. When your child is actually on their Amazon Kids Fire tablet, they will find a range of videos that are also available on Amazon Prime, but they won't find everything in here that you can watch on your Prime account on TV. For example, we have paid for, downloaded the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory film, and uh, it is not available here. Once your free yearly subscription is over, you are gonna have to pay a monthly fee to continue using Kids Plus on your kids' tablet. Absolutely everything on the Amazon Kids tablets is controlled by you via the Amazon Kids Plus app on your smartphone. You can set time limits for how long they can use the app. You can limit what specific apps they can use. You can remove apps. You can add apps. You can set specific time limits for types of activities. So say you could set unlimited time for reading books, but say maybe 30 minutes a day for playing on games. Unlike your Android and your iPad, the Amazon Fire Kids range comes with cases. The non-pro particularly is really well bumpered and they withstand drops from height. However, if you do drop it and break it, the Amazon Kids Fire tablets come with a two year worry free guarantee. If your kid breaks it, Amazon will replace it. So they're a good budget option, but there are disadvantages with choosing these budget tablets over an iPad or an Android. The big one being that they are slower. Their processors aren't as fast. They cannot cope with certain games. So for example, my kids have really, really got into Roblox recently. They've been playing it a lot. However, the Amazon 8 Kids Pro just can't seem to cope with Roblox. It frequently crashes. Sometimes they have spells where it's fine and they're playing it no problems. And then other times just Roblox completely shuts down their tablet. And actually I had to do a full factory reset of my eldest daughter's Amazon 8 Kids Pro because it was just all over the place and crashing constantly even with other apps. So it really shows that the tech in these is not as superior. My kids can play Roblox on the Android device that I've got here and on the iPad, absolutely no problem. However, what I would say, they both love playing Minecraft and the Amazon 8 Kids Pro has absolutely no problem with Minecraft. We've never had issues with it crashing. And just like with the Android and the iPad, your child can download video content, say in Netflix, they wanna save something to watch on a plane while you're traveling. They can do that with the Amazon Kids tablets. And you can boost the memory by adding memory cards to the tablet as well. What then are the key things to consider when making your decision on which tablet is gonna be best for your child? Let's start with what's probably the most important one, the cost. If you're on a budget, then the Amazon Fire Kids range is gonna be streets ahead for you. They are far, far cheaper than the good Android and iPad options on the market. And the fact that Amazon will replace the tablet if your child breaks it within two years is a huge plus. The Amazon Fire Kids tablets come with the case that will protect it from breakages, unlike the iPad and the Android, for which you'd have to buy something separately. The next thing to consider is what does your child actually want to do on the tablet? Do they want to play games that are going to be really intensive? If they are huge Roblox fans, then I have to say I wouldn't recommend the Amazon Fire Kids 8 Pro. However, my friends have got a Pro 10 for their children, and that plays Roblox just fine without any issues. It does have a faster process than the Amazon Kids Pro 8. 
what you might want to consider is what sort of games is your child already used to playing. So if they've already been playing on like your iPhone or your iPad, they're probably used to that selection of games. If they pick up the Amazon Fire Kids, they're possibly going to be disappointed with the selection of games, but also the way the game store is organized on the Amazon Kids tablets. I have to say, I don't like the option for browsing games. It's not as good. It's far, far easier to browse different games in the iPad app store and also in the Android app store than it is in the Amazon Kids. Um, kids can search for specific things, but it, it, it's just not as superior a shop front. Having said that, if this is your kid's first tablet, they are gonna be over the moon about the Amazon Kids tablet. There is a lot going on on there, just not quite as much as on the iPad or the Android. And so feeding into that as part of that consideration, think about the age of your child. If they are very, very young, a toddler, maybe they've only just started school, then an Amazon Fire Kids is probably gonna fulfill all of the needs that they have right now. However, ever so slightly older, then I would say that the iPad or the Android, Android has got a bit more longevity for you because it has just got such a large library of different things. There's gonna be more options there for content that they're gonna enjoy as they get older. And also the way they use it will change as they get to secondary school. It's highly possible they'll be using a tablet to do homework. And for that, they'll probably want something that's quite fast and has access to word processing documents. Now you can do word processing on the Amazon Fire, not in the kids profile, you'd have to switch over to the adult profile. But again, as I've said before, you have got a slower tablet with the Amazon Fire Kids. If you've got a younger child, the Amazon Kids tablets are gonna withstand the rough treatment they're gonna get far better than an iPad and an Android will. And also you're not gonna feel so paranoid all the time thinking, oh my God, they are playing with a device that is worth several hundred pounds as if it is a Frisbee. Another thing to consider is parental control. So with the Amazon Fire Kids range, you have got a really fantastic app that provides you with remote control of the tablet. You can shut it down altogether with just a swipe and a tap of your finger. And you can also take a look there at what your child has been doing on their tablet and how long they've been doing that for. However, Android and iPad also have options for setting up that tablet with limits for your child. So all of them have got parental controls. It really comes down to which one is gonna like be preferable to you. Another option you'll consider is picture and sound quality and the general speed of the processor in the tablet. Now, I know that a lot of gadget geeks will say, well, obviously iPad or Android. However, let's be honest, like kids don't really care or know so much about whether it's the absolute best on the market. So for me, when we were first shopping for tablets, I wasn't really looking for, well, what's got the best pitch quality? What's got the best sound quality? What's got the best processor? I was really looking for what's gonna be most appropriate for my child and what are they gonna be able to use easily? That also fits in with my budget. I really hope that this video has helped you make a decision. I would say that your best budget option is gonna be the Amazon Fire Kids. It's a fantastic tablet. There's a lot going on on there. Your kids will find a lot to do. For younger kids, the Amazon Fire Kids is gonna be your best option purely because you're not gonna be panicking all the time about them breaking it. However, if you've got slightly older kids, say seven, eight and above, you might wanna consider an Android or an iPad just because you're gonna get more longevity out of it in terms of the range of content that's available to them on there. And also those tablets are much faster, better processors, and therefore they're gonna be able to cope with games that your child wants to play that are a bit more intensive. Still confused after watching this? I understand why you might be. One of the best options that you could try is to give your child an old tablet of yours to try out, set it up with all the parental limits that you can. Hopefully, if you've got an iPad or an Android, you have got options um, to tinker with the settings and make it kid-friendly, set up limits, limit access to internet. Do something like that and then like buy a new tablet for yourself and then you haven't invested hundreds and hundreds of pounds in a tablet only to realize actually I, I wish I'd gone with like a really much cheaper option or a different option. Okay guys, I really, really hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to talk about all of the different options that I have discussed here in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next upload. Bye.